everybody, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Ashton. And I am Kevin, and we want to welcome you guys back to Thinking Rightly uh, with us. This is a podcast where we want to come alongside you to help you think rightly as a Christian in today's culture. And before we dive into today's topic that we're eager to get to, uh, we wanted to just do a little bit of introduction as to who we are, just in case you you don't know us, this is your first time listening, or what, wherever you might be with our podcast. Yeah, it's been a while, so in case you guys forgot, my name is Ashton, and I'm a first-year college student. And my name is Kevin, and I am a local church pastor here in the state of Georgia. Today's topic that we will cover is thinking rightly about celebrity and Christianity and how has celebrity influenced us and how does celebrity influence what we believe and what we practice as Christians. First, let me give credit where credit is due and the reason why we wanted to talk about this topic, and it's because of a book I read back in January uh, by Kath, uh, Caitlin Beatty uh, titled Celebrities for Jesus, How Personas, Platforms, and Prophets Are Hurting the Church. And I'd encourage you to order a copy if you want to dive deeper into this topic after you've listened. We're not going to cover everything, uh, and it's a fascinating read and very, very helpful. Now, I remember thinking as a young Christian— what if so-and-so celebrity became a Christian? I know in my day in high school, it was uh, someone like Dave Matthews from the Dave Matthews Band. He was, he, was my, he was my guy. That was my band. That's what I listened to. And I always thought that would be amazing because they would reach so many people with the gospel. That was my thinking. But now, as I've gotten older, I've seen major stars uh, claim they are Christian, and it has had very little impact, or at least not the impact that I thought it would have when I was younger, which now I understand to be the way of the kingdom of God. God uh, chooses the lowly and the foolish of the world and the weak to shame the wise and the strong. So God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart, and he could care less about celebrity or fame or any of those categories. He doesn't need need famous people. He doesn't need celebrities uh, in order to spread the gospel. So today, uh, as we talk about this topic, Ashton is going to share about a few celeb celebrities that have at some point or still do or are kind of quasi-Christians. Um, and she's going to talk about some of those uh, for us right now. Okay, so let me start with a quick disclaimer that I have no idea where any of these celebrities are in their faith um, currently. I am taking all of what I'm about to say from articles that I've read, interviews I've listened to, and things like that. Um, so I really have no idea where they are at um, in their walk with Jesus currently. Um, this is just what I can find um, online. This is just resources that are available to me. But one celebrity that I wanted to say did a fantastic job throughout his life of setting a good example for what I think celebrity Christians should look like um, is Chadwick Boseman. And you guys might know him as Black Panther from Marvel. Um, and I haven't seen any of his other, other movies. I've only seen Black Panther, but he's great. Um, unfortunately, he did pass away from colon cancer in August of 2020. But um, throughout his life, he was very open and honest about his relationship with Jesus. He was raised in a Christian home and kept his faith into adulthood. Um, there are multiple records of Bozeman professing his faith publicly. He quoted scripture publicly while addressing the 2018 student body of Howard University, the actor's alma mater, in a commencement speech. He said, sometimes you need to feel the pain and sting of defeat to activate the real passion and purpose God has predestined inside of you. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And then while honoring Denzel Washington in 2019 with the AFI Life Achievement Award, Bozeman quoted Ephesians 3.20, May God bless you exceedingly and abundantly, more for what's in store than he ever has before. Um, following his death in August of 2020, Bozeman was described as a gentle soul and a brilliant artist who will stay with us for eternity 
through his iconic performances over his short yet illustrious career. What really stood out to me about him was the impact he had on co-actors, um, especially co-actors who are clearly not Christians, um, one of which being Josh Gad, um, who said this about Bozeman after he passed. He said, you come upon people in your life who are next level good. This was a man who was beyond talented and was so unbelievably giving, not only as a performer, but as a human being. Beyond just being Black Panther, Chadwick was T'Challa in real life. He was somebody who just gave and gave and gave and never stopped giving. I thought that was really cool that he could see that in him, even though he himself is not a Christian. Then the next would actually be one of his co-actors in Black Panther. Her name is Latita Wright. She plays his sister in Black Panther. And then in the newest Black Panther movie, Wakanda Forever, she is the next Black Panther. So she was actually, I think he had a part in her coming to faith, um, but she says she was raised in a family of believers, um, but she didn't become a Christian and herself until later on. Supposedly, an actor named Malachi Kirby, who I have never heard of before this, was said to have invited her to a Bible study, and she was changed after that. Wright said that Christianity gave her the centering that she needed, the good foundation she needed, and it helped her to put in perspective what was important for her. She says, chasing something that is not tangible or not wholesome is not the way I want to go. If I was to pack all this up, I'd still be happy with my faith, the contentment I feel, and the connection to God. I think it's really cool that she started a production company called 316 Productions, which comes from the popular bible verse john three sixteen. she started this company with the goal of producing meaningful content within the entertainment industry so i think that's really cool so yes those are two celebrities that i found that have done a really really great job with their faith throughout their um acting career thanks ash for um those little overviews of those two actors lives um both just happen to be in the black panther coincidence i think not (laughs) both very good movies but i think a good point to to make even with with both of those um those people being celebrities and knowing just how hard of a of a world that well at least it appears to be and i'm sure is pretty difficult um to be a christian in that sort of culture, uh, is being consistent in your faith. So, um, whatever role you might be playing, or um, or, or whatever role is presented to you, because I'm sure there's a lot that are presented um, to to each individual actor that is popular at some point in time. And so, I think what what we we see with with those who are outspoken in with their faith in Hollywood who are celebrities, uh, is a consistency with what they believe. So they don't compromise, um, you know, because they want to be the big star of the next movie, but it has, you know, certain content in it that would not be honoring to, to the Lord. Um, and so I think that's, that's the, the thing that you see that is um, the same, I guess, with celebrities who are who are seeking to live faith, faithfully as Christians um, in celebrity in celebrity culture in Hollywood, so those were a couple of celebrities that were and are consistent with their faith as far as far as we can tell from a distance. I know somebody probably will get on here and send us something about one of these actors or actresses. So we're just we're just giving you an overview of what we see from a distance about these particular celebrities. So now Ashton is going to give us some celebrities who aren't qu- quite as consistent as these first two we mentioned. We never want to sit here and um, try to judge anyone's heart of where they're at, but we can look at their actions. Um, and so Ashton's going to give us a few uh, examples of that now. A couple of other celebrities that I did some research on. Um, we're going to start strong with um, Justin Bieber. So a lot of people know that he he did go through a phase where, well, from what we can tell, um, where he was like publicly professing his Christianity, but he did it in a very strange way. Um, so there's no way of knowing like 
whether he was ever walking uh, in faith or if he still is. Um, so in November of 2020, he made an Instagram post saying, as all of you know by now, I'm a Jesus guy. What you may not know is that I am not a religious man. I follow the teachings of Jesus and believe he is the Messiah. There are many things I have seen in churches that I strongly disagree with. Judgmental posture, exclusion, hatred, all in the name of Christianity. Um, and then in August of 2022, Bieber led thousands, tens of thousands of people in prayer at one of his concerts. His prayer went something like this. He said, God, I pray right now for every fear, every insecurity, every bad thought we have about ourselves or someone else. We just release that right now in the name of Jesus. Um, you can actually look that video up. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Then we get to the latest song that he has released. Um, it's titled Private Landing, and it's with, he just kind of collabs with uh, Don Tolliver, so he actually isn't the main person of the song. But while performing this single at the Rolling Loud Music Festival on March 4th, 2023, Bieber made a grand entrance on stage. Uh, what we think he was doing was smoking a joint. We have no way of actually knowing if it was a joint. Could have just been a cigarette. I don't know. But it looked very much like a joint. It might um, be legal where he was at. It, it also might so, be legal. In all fairness. But <laughs> well, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, and then and he's also participated in some pretty interesting um, music videos and songs and such uh, that just don't exactly point listeners towards christ um which is what christians should be doing um so yeah that's justin bieber um i honestly he was the hardest one i could like to find information on so if anybody has information on him i'd be curious to hear anyways next we are going out with a bang with good old kanye west so <laughs> kanye has been on a roller coaster mm -hmm. uh he had us all fooled in october of 2019 when he released jesus is king he had me fooled i was fully convinced he was a christian the album is a banger. It's amazing. It's a really good album. I would be lying if I said I still didn't listen like to it, it to this day. Like yeah, it. it's great. But yeah, he released this album called Jesus is King. Uh, during this time, he did show many signs of being a believer, but I mean, obviously, there's it wasn't consistent. Um, I don't think he was involved in a church. Yeah, there there was just there was a lot going on there with Kanye. But um, in October of 2022, he said in an interview. Um, when I say Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the people know as the race black really are. This is who our people are, the blood of Christ. This, as a Christian, is my belief. So he's basically stating that, that this, this Jew, this, I don't even know, like this was his belief. I don't, I don't have no idea. But anyways, uh, so he said that. And then he, since then, which is very ironic, um, he has been known to make some anti-Semitic claims while accusing Jewish people of conspiring to suppress and sedate him as part of a larger plot to control black people across America. Because of this, uh, companies such as Adidas, Gap, and Balenciaga have made attempts to, <laughs> okay. to, um, to cut ties with him. And I did read a very interesting article about lots of other companies and like churches and stuff that have associated with him like everyone's just basically trying to get away from him because he's he's been making some claims you can again do more research on him because honestly it's he's very fascinating to learn about um he's he's a little crazy he's a little crazy for sure and then something else i found funny was whenever he made these anti-semitic claims uh, there's a tattoo studio called Nama Studios in London, England, and they were offering free tattoo removals of any Kanye West related tattoos. And they titled the offer on their social media, Easy Come, Easy Go. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, so those are the two that I pulled out that I found were not as consistent with their faith. All right, Ash, thanks for those um, overviews of those celebrities. And I know, um, at least for some of us with, you know, we listen to Justin Bieber's music or Kanye's music. And um, and so it is interesting to kind of hear um, other snippets of what's going on in their lives because they are human beings who are wrestling with the same things that we wrestle with in this broken world. And they are grasping at 
different straws and I think sometimes one of the straws can be Christianity, but it's not the straw. It's it's one of many straws. Um, and so I think that's particularly with Kanye West, um, who is who is uh, in a sad state, in my opinion. So, well, I mentioned earlier um, Caitlin Beatty's book about celebrity and Christianity. And again, it's an excellent book. I highly recommend it. But I want to use her book as as a as kind of a template for for what I'm about to say over the next few minutes um, concerning Christianity and celebrity because I think she has a lot of good things to say about it, and I think one of the first things to say is or one of the first things to talk about is the difference between fame and celebrity because I didn't realize this before reading her book, but there is a difference between the two of those. They're not the same thing. So this is how she defines it in her book. Fame comes as a byproduct of virtue, wise leadership, specific accomplishments, or all of the above. It arises from acting and leading well in a particular embodied community where someone knows others and can be known. By contrast, celebrity relies on mass media to create an an aura of well-knownness without the celebrity necessarily having to do anything noteworthy or virtuous. And so they, they, they give the appearance of being well-known, whether that be on uh, social media or YouTube or anything like that, um, but really they have uh, little to do with, uh, with being known by really anybody else. And so you have this kind of uh, rising up within our culture. Um, I've seen it a lot with just uh, YouTube stars and Instagram stars and so many people who became famous during 2020 um, when we were all stuck in our houses. And so they became Instagram famous. And so you saw these celebrities beginning to, to, to rise up. And so Kat- Kathleen Beatty in, in her book also says the right kind of fame uh, arises from a life well lived, not a brand well cultivated, and so I think that's something important to to understand when it when it comes to fame and celebrity. That fame typically comes from a life well lived, and so you have someone like Chadwick Boseman, who was who was famous, but also a celebrity, but. Also, people gave testimony about his life being a life well lived. He wasn't someone who cultivated the the, the Chadwick Boseman brand uh, or, or anything like that. But it, it's one of those things where you can look at the difference between someone who has gained some fame, gained some nor- notoriety, or whatever it might be, and looking at their life, is it a life well lived? And then you look at a celebrity's life, and are they you can ask the question are they trying to cultivate a brand or are they trying to live a a a life that is good and pleasing to the lord and i think you can begin to see some real differences there when you start doing that and it's interesting uh something else that that caitlin Beatty says um concerning just uh fame within christianity she says for every famous saint there are millions of ordinary ones Ordinary people are the primary way God has walked in and through the world over the centuries. So going back to my earlier comments about when I was younger and thinking, well, if so-and-so famous person became a Christian, uh, they would have such a massive impact. And here, um, BD is saying that that's not the way it's been throughout history. The way God has worked is he has worked through ordinary people, uh, fools and the weak, to shame the, the the wise and the strong. And I think that's something really important and something that distinguishes um, those who are who, who are considered famous or those who are considered um, celebrities. Now getting into more celebrity um, culture and, and what that looks like, um, BD quotes from a, uh, a historian, Daniel Borstein, and he writes this. He says, The celebrity is a person who is known for his well-knownness. His qualities, or rather this his lack of qualities, illustrate our peculiar problem. I think about the uh, Jake Paul and his brother who make these 
ridiculous YouTube videos who have zero qualities. Um, that, that sounds just like what he's talking about there. And he wrote this in 1962, so he was well ahead of the game here. But he says, He has been fabricated on purpose to satisfy our exaggerated expectations of human greatness. He is made by all of us who willingly read about him, who like to see him on television or YouTube or social media, who buy recordings of his voice and talk about him to our friends. So, Beattie goes on to say, a celebrity is known for their well-knownness, and we feed the problem. So, we can get all up in arms about celebrity, and, and we can, you know get upset at celebrities and say they live the they live a privileged life and they're out of touch with reality and yeah maybe some of those things are true but in actuality we are feeding the problem of celebrity so a lot of the reason people stay celebrities is because of us we 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 want them in our life we want to adore them we want to look at them we want to listen to them we want to watch them and so we perpetuate the problem of celebrity so I thought this was interesting in Beattie's book that she continually goes back to to celebrity uh, and the problem with celebrity is really just a, a lack of proximity. And, and that means a lack of proximity to people. Um, and, and what I just kind of concluded, it, which was a lack of just community, a lack of being being with other people. She says social power, uh, de- the definition of celebrity is social power without proximity. So they have a lot of, they have a lot of clout in the world. They have a lot of power and they use it, but they use it when uh, distant from other people. She goes on to say the very nature of celebrity, especially in a digital era, is that it hides power behind the illusion of intimacy. So how many of you who are listening follow people on Instagram that you have never met, but you say that you know them just based on what you're seeing on their Instagram feed? Because you see it every day. And a lot of these people are very open and honest about their lives on Instagram, or we think they might be open and honest. They might be sharing a whole side that, um, or not sharing a whole side that that um, that we'll never see. And so um, we think they're being open and honest. And so we think that we know these people, but really they're hiding behind the illusion of intimacy. We think we know them. We think we're intimate with them because we follow them on Instagram or um, or whatever social media platform we have. And so I think even with that, I think we can kind of get into – um, the whole idea of of celebrity that leaks into the the local church because that is that is a problem as well. It's a problem that Caitlin Beatty is bringing up in her book. Um, she talks about uh, celebrity pastors and the uh, amount of corruption there is in the the book publishing industry, which is which was really fascinating to read about. And so you do. You have different celebrity pastors. You, some of you you know some of these, like uh, Judah Smith or Stephen Furtick, Chad Veach. All of these are all current pastors that we would classify as celebrity pastors because they have a massive following. They have um, they do sort of pump their social media up with their posts and uh, and their um, clips of themselves preaching and and all of the above. And so they are they are perpetuating the idea of celebrity. You also have men like Mark Driscoll and uh, Carl Lentz, both uh, 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 both who were very popular celebrity pastors, but both of these guys fell pretty hard um, at the height of their careers. They they fell pretty hard. These were both two men who who led very large congregations. Um, one of which was the was the fastest growing church in the country at one point in time, and I know for Carl Lentz, his church was rapidly growing in New York City. It attracted all sorts of celebrities um, that came to his church, but he also fell. Uh, this is from a New York Times article uh, from 2020, uh, right after. Uh, all of this went down with with Carl Lentz, but also with Hillsong Church. The title of the article is called "The Rise and Fall of Carl Lentz, 
the celebrity pastor of Hillsong Church. And just part in this article, it says this, but as, but as Mr. Lentz's profile rose, many, because he became really good friends with Justin Bieber, just to go back to the Justin Bieber um, mentioning him earlier, but, but as Mr. Lentz's profile rose, many congregants felt the focus on fame and cultural power that had helped the church grow was overwhelming its spiritual mission. Last month, it all came crashing down for Mr. Lentz in a scandal that has cast a shadow on one of the most influential megachurches in America, speaking about Hillsong Church there. So, celebrity. We could, we could blame it on celebrity. We, we do blame it on celebrity. These, these men um, that I mentioned here are, are, are pursuing that, perpetuating that in a lot of ways. But at the same time, we're also adding to it in the American church by, by listening and sharing and um, reading their books or, or whatever it might be. We perpetuate the problem of celebrity. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, and I think the response to, um, you know, celebrity pastors like this, um, or even celebrities who might call themselves Christians, is something that Beatty wrote in her book that I think is a good response to this, which is not to um, pin them against the wall, you know, say I knew it, you know, you're you're you know you're a hypocrite, you know, you you're not really living out what you believe, and we sit here and judge them and judge their hearts and things like that, which is which is always the the easier thing to do, right? We do that from a distance. It's easy to do from a distance. But BD has a a great line here where she says, "The leader out of touch with their true self will cling to the spotlight, even to their own and others' detriment." Because it's the only way they know how to feel loved. And I think that's really where we have to, when we begin to look at these celebrity pastors or these celebrities who are inconsistent with their faith and um, whether they're Christians now or, or ever, or they ever were or they ever will be, is to have some sort of, some level of compassion for them, um, not not in an affirming type of way, but but compassion, knowing that they are not um, resting in the love that God has for them in Jesus. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. They're they're what they're doing is they're resting in um, this kind of fake love that they are receiving from their celebrity status. And I think I think for me at least, that's a really sad place to be. That's not that's not a place that I would want to be. Um, is getting my love from social media likes or um, or even being put up on a pedestal as a famous pastor or a celebrity pastor or anything like that. So I think when in a lot of ways, um, when we think about celebrity, when we think about fame, and obviously we want to think rightly about this, which is why we have this long conversation about it and have some um, more lighthearted portions of this, but we, but we always wanted to look to the scriptures and say and ask what what do the scriptures say about celebrity? What do, what do, what do the scriptures say about fame? What do, do they have anything to say about it? And they actually do. Um, not so much about celebrity per se, but they do. But the Bible is does talk about fame. The Bible talks about um, being known in 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 different in different ways. In Deuteronomy twenty six. 18 through 19, it says, And the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possession as he promised, and that you are to keep all his commands. He has declared that he will set you in praise, fame, and honor high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord, to the Lord your God as he promised. So so just a, a short declaration that it is God who says, I am going to make my people famous. I am going to make them known, not so that they can be, not so that they can be praised or that they can be, um, you know, lifted up onto this high pedestal, but it's, he's making them um, uh, known because it brings him glory. And so people are looking at, uh, at God's people and when they look at their life and when they look at how they're displaying um, what they believe about um, God, uh, these, those who look at them will also praise God. 
And so you have that that happening in the Old Testament. Um, then you have, if you jump into the New Testament, and throughout the New Testament, um, while the, the word fame is not necessarily used, the idea of fame is used throughout, especially the Gospels, when we are speaking about Jesus um, himself. Jesus was famous. It, through, it, in all of the Gospels, it talks about that Jesus' fame um, spread throughout the entire world, at the, the entire known world at that time. Um, he would go into towns and he would be mobbed by people who, um, who knew uh, uh, about what he was teaching and knew about his works of, uh, of healing and forgiving sins and the like. Um, he was famous for that. Um, but his fame also led him to death as well. And so I think there's a, there's a lesson to be learned when it comes to celebrity and fame, uh, especially within Christianity is that Jesus himself says that we are to take up our cross daily and follow him. So here is famous Jesus saying, you have to take up the instrument of execution that was used in the Roman world at that time. You need to take up your cross and follow me. So you are, you are to be known enough by others that you are coming in contact with uh, that they would see your faith, that they would see what it is that you believe, and you have to be willing to take the hit for that. So I think in a lot of ways, the reason why some of these celebrities don't stay consistent in their faith when they profess Christ and they stand before tens of thousands of people and cry and quote Bible verses and do all of those things is because death comes very quickly. And so giving up uh, your riches, giving up your celebrity status even, is a hard thing to do. It's, it's, it's no wonder that, they, that uh, Jesus tells us that it's hard for the rich to enter the kingdom. It's easier for, the, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Because there is sacrifice there. And, and more importantly, it's the sacrifice of not just your, your material things but it's the sacrifice of your own life for the sake of the gospel and we see that throughout the new testament in every single character that we come in contact with that they are giving their lives for the sake of the gospel that was really helpful thank you so much for that i think that me and others listening will have a lot to take away from that so in conclusion um first of all thank you guys so much for listening if you've made it all the way through this far um but i wanted to hop on here to tell you guys where you can find us outside of the podcast so we're on instagram as thinking rightly podcast pretty easy to find us um and we're also on facebook as thinking rightly podcast um so that makes things super super easy we'd really appreciate it if you guys wouldn't give us a follow or a like on either one of those and then we're also on apple podcast and spotify if you're an apple listener we're on there for you. And if you're a Spotify listener, we're on here. So yeah, that's really all I have to say. Um, thank you guys so much for listening in today. We really appreciate it. And we will hopefully, or you guys will hopefully hear from us in the next couple of weeks.